Greetings and salutations, comrades! You've tuned to Java Byte Code Course, created by Vyacheslav Kowalewski, adapted and translated by LSD Team. <laughs> we'll talk about Java Byte Code in general, you will learn what Byte Code is, how it looks like, and why it is needed. It's necessary to mention that the topic is so vast that in this course we will cover only its core. However, at the end you will know enough to be able to make a lot of your own independent manipulations with the bytecode. Even though this topic requires thorough understanding of the JVM functioning, as long as you are familiar with Java it won't be a problem. Otherwise, I hope you'll find our Java 101 course useful. So, we'll be discussing the following topics. What bytecode is, how to interpret the bytecode, and how to live with this. Yeah, once you learn then, your life will never be the same, and I'll prove it to you with examples. Do note that we will not cover optimizations done by compiler in JIT, short for just-in-time compiler, but those topics will be still mentioned from time to time in further episodes. Probably you have a question why bytecode is called so. This is because all instructions you'll face have size of 1 or in some cases 2 bytes. There is a special table that holds a list of all instructions along with their descriptions and behaviors. We'll get back to it later. As soon as byte has 256 states, the total amount of instructions can't exceed this number. Currently about 200 instructions exist, others are reserved for future use. We don't have a lot of space for extension left, but the new codes are rarely added. Next, I'd like to explain what you need to know about code 4. First of all, because you'll acquire professional understanding of the platform you are working with. Secondly, you will be able to create your own programming language. You already have the VM. You only have to develop the language syntax and compile it into virtual machines by its code. Thirdly, in many cases it will greatly help you with debugging. And finally, you'll learn very low-level optimization technique that I personally strongly do not recommend using. Let me show you a few examples to convince you why it's really useful. So, here we have a piece of code. What do you think we'll see on the screen after the code execution? From the first side, it's difficult to say whether there will be one, two or even three. There are actually a lot of options to check what will the result be. You can experiment, but this way is only suitable for simple cases, like this particular one. Also, you can look at the specification pages for Java, or alternatively, you can use the fastest and the most advanced method. Open the bytecode. Let's do it now. This is the bytecode for just one single line, but it says that the result is 1 not 2 or 3. Let's see why. Do note that the value of i was set to 0 on previous line. That was not included in the current piece of bytecode. Mm -hmm. The first i++ will be substituted by 0 and i will be incremented by 1. Respectively, there will be 0 plus the second i++. i already equals 1, so it will return 1 and again i will be incremented by 1, which means that i will contain 2. As we can see now, our record has become a 0 plus 1, which equals to 1, and this value will be stored to i, raising the value of 2, which was there before. So, 1 will be displayed as a result of execution of this code. In order to see it, we didn't have to read the specification or guess it or execute the code. We've simply looked at the byte code for one line that we were interested in, and we realized what was happening and how exactly it works. Maybe this bytecode looks weird and confusing to you right now, but don't bother about it. Currently I'm showing you why it is useful and why you should know it. Don't worry about the rest. You will learn it very quickly and easily after the first few lectures. Let's move on to the next example. We know that for each cycle works with all objects that are iterable. Here on the screen there is an array of primitives called M. Integer cannot be inherited from anything of such nature, but still there is iteration. Thus, the question arises, how does it work? Again, you can guess, you can look into docs, or you can open the bytecode and see how this thing works, how it's arranged and understand exactly what's going on in there. Example number 3. Here we have two cases of string concatenation. We enter max exclamation point, one time using plus and the other one using string builder. 
Which of these concatenation you think will consume more RAM and which one will be better optimized? As you might know, it's not recommended to use PLUS for concatenation of lines, because it creates a new string object each time, producing a lot of mess in the memory. On the contrary to it, String Builder is optimized. But for this particular example, String Builder actually shows worse results. If you look at the bytecode of this thing, you'll see that HiMax exclamation point was already optimized during the compilation stage, so there will be no concatenation for line A performed in the runtime, cause the compiler already joined these three lines. But for line B an object will be created, then the other parts will be appended and finally casted to string. In this case, anti-pattern plus shows better results in terms of memory consumption than the best practice approach. This is not rocket science when you know where to look. Don't learn it by heart, because all these things can and most likely will change in the next version of GVM or GTK build. The compiler can generate a completely different bytecode, and as a result behavior will be changed drastically. And if you blindly memorized it, then sooner or later you will realize that your knowledge is 50% wrong. The worst thing is that you won't know which 50% are wrong and which are not. This problem is very easy to solve. Look at the bytecode and see what's really going on. These were three examples that show why you need to understand Java bytecode, because you can see for yourself what your code was converted into. I hope I have convinced you that the topic is useful and more importantly is really interesting. Therefore, I suggest you to move on to the next episodes and let the fun begin. See you soon!